Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I uh, just want to take a quick second to thank absolutely every one of you who has been viewing and commenting and subscribing to my channel. It's grown like gangbusters since I put up the video about uh, alternative ergonomics. Just blew me away. Uh, everything's, everything's really improving since then for me. I never really had ambitions for this channel, but... Now I kind of I kind of do. I'm getting a little bit motivated just to put up original content more often and I'll do some drum cover still as I can, but uh a little general interest stuff, little things that I think might be interesting and uh, a few of you have appreciated what I've been putting up. So thanks very much for your feedback on that and thanks very much for being cool. Most of you have been really cool and kind and there's no reason not to be. I mean, you're always, there are always going to be people who are going to be critical and want to be trolls or something like that, and they'll be, you know, quickly dispatched as they appear. Um, just don't want this to be a, a rude space. I just want to share stuff that I think is interesting. If you don't find it interesting, you can move right along. You don't need to say anything nasty, but like I said, everybody for the most part, has been very cool, and thank you for that. But today, I just wanted to do a quick video on, a quick, <laughs> you've seen my videos, they, they can get long, so here I am talking again, but uh, a video on just gig prep. Uh, the other day, I was getting ready uh, for a show that we did on Saturday, and uh, I said, why not record this? I mean, there's nothing that anybody who's a gigging drummer or has been a gigging drummer hasn't seen before. There's nothing original here except that it's just me getting ready and showing you the way I, I do certain things. Now, um, when I got to the club, um, unloaded my stuff, the equipment truck was right behind me. So I didn't have time to set up in there. And it was just chaos, you know, just start unload the equipment trailer and Everyone else starts arriving, so I really don't have time to document much. Um, and then after the show, it's it's chaos in reverse, you know, getting out of this club. Because we had to start late at this particular club, which is okay. It's a club rules, but um means we get out of there later. So we were kind of motivated to, you know, kind of skedaddle. So no video of me setting up. So I did add a video at the end of this of... Sunday afternoon, setting everything back up. Somebody did ask for a setup video, and I'm going to chop that down into bits so it's not the entire, I think it took me about 20 minutes to set up the kit, just kind of at a leisurely pace. So I will show you that at the end. Somebody asked to see that. But uh, again, thanks again for everything. And uh, if you like the video, please like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Please share your comments. If you've got any questions, leave those. I'll get to them as I can. But, again, thanks a lot. And uh, let's take a look at what it's like for me just getting ready for a gig. Obviously, one of the most important things to do before a gig is to go over the material. Now, even though we play these songs week in and week out for the most part, I like to make sure I know them better than anybody. Um, I kind of like to be the conductor on the stage, and I don't want to be the guy with the deer in the headlights look. I'd rather bring people back to home base, but yeah, I've uh, I've missed things because I haven't played songs in a while, so now it's habit. Um, I'll usually you know go over a day or two in advance, so I'm not doing everything at once and uh, kind of spacing it out, but just making sure I've got a handle on it and have gone over everything. Now, typically... Reserve all the newer stuff, the trickier material stuff that, you know, has weird physical fills or something that needs to be executed on a drum kit. Um, for rehearsal purposes, I'll do that on the kit. And, uh, so I, I just w recorded some raw drums here and threw up a camera. Um, so you can hear just what the raw drums sound like and just, it's just me going through some of the songs that have tricky bits or, um, for whatever reason, these are ones that have to be played on a kit. And I put the camera at an angle so you can see that remote bass drum in action. Uh, since I recorded this, I put the Tama Slave pedal as my main pedal again. I took the Pearl out of there, and I changed the, th the throw on that. So the beater is actually coming back further, but I increased the spring tension, and the thing plays like a champ now. So 
Um, I'm always fine tuning things after a gig. If I find something doesn't work or something's not in the right place, I'll make an adjustment and, uh, I I'm constantly doing that. So, uh, here's a quick video of that. And anything that I don't go over on the kit, I go over on the practice pad. I always like to work on my rolls and rudiments and sticking and things like that. I always have a practice pad handy. So um, anything I don't go over on the kit, like songs that I know really inside and out that there's no real difficult bits, I just go through the motions. I go through the mechanics and just make sure I've gone through the structure of every song. So the majority of what I do to get uh, prepped for a gig is being done on a practice pad. But again, the important bits, the uh, the more physical stuff, the tricky bits where there's a lot of coordination or independence, that's done on a drum kit. Another part of teardown is wiping the drums down, cleaning the cymbals. I don't clean cymbals every time, but when I do, I use Music Nomad. I really don't care about logos. I just want clean cymbals. I don't like dirt. I don't like patina. I want cymbals to be, you know, to sound as new as possible, and that's getting all the crap out of them. So uh, that's the stuff that I use. Another part of tear down is tuning the drums, just getting them back in tune. Because after I've played a gig and rehearsed a little bit at home, things aren't going to be exactly as they were. I mean, the most these drums are going out of tune with these Evans UV2 heads is maybe a half step, maybe. And that's the 14-inch drum. The rest of them are pretty close, but they go just a tiny bit flat. So I use this uh, free app called the Note Recognizer. Now, I use this in lieu of a TuneBot. The TuneBot app is free also. I have that. It's a useful tool. Um, but the note recognizer, it, I just put it over each lug very close. Now, make sure, like you see here, I've got a towel underneath the drum to dampen the bottom head. I'm not putting too much weight of the drum on it to push on it and, you know, detune that head. But I'm just making sure that it's not ringing while I'm doing the the opposite head so go through each one and make sure the frequencies are aligned and i'm getting consistent results with these um they always sound the same when i start playing you know and that's how i like it i don't like guesswork you know some people say yeah, i got a good ear i tune them to, well that's fine but when you're playing chords two toms together uh when they're in tune they sound so much better um so yeah i'll take the time to do that um, I haven't been really tuning drums properly for most of my <laughs> playing life. So, uh, I make sure I give it attention, but yeah, the note right recognizer app's a good one to get. Also get the tune bot. Um, 
it's good stuff. Um, I know some people use the drum dial and do it by tension. That's fine. As long as uh, you're getting the same frequency all the way around, you'll get consistent results. So the teardown, kind of a boring thing to watch, so I've truncated this a little bit. Not first thing I do, uh, whether at the gig or at home, is pack up the cymbals. I do that from behind the kit. I always keep my cymbal bag behind me on stage, so as soon as everything's done, I just get right on it. But once I get those packed up, I stage them by the back door and uh, into the kitchen. Um, then I'll bring them outside, put them on the porch next to the garage, and then uh, I load my van in a certain way every time. Next thing I do is uh, unplug my microphones, get my mics all packed up. Of course, on this kit, I'm using the four toms and the snare drum. And uh, gosh, that guy just throws mic cables all over the place, doesn't he? And uh, so I get those, again, I'm using the Electro Voice PL35s for my Tom, uh, my Toms and my Snare. Not the greatest mics, but they're pretty darn good mics. They're durable. They're consistent. Um, I haven't had any problems with them. I'm not going to get a huge expensive uh, mic set because I know I'll damage them. Same thing with sunglasses. Cheap sunglasses all the way because <laughs> I always break or lose the other ones. So get my mics all packed up. And again, I put those in the staging area. And then the next thing I do, get the bass drum unplugged. I've got the Sennheiser E902 in there, which is a phenomenal microphone. Uh, then I wrap up my uh, mic snake. And this is basically six mic cables, uh, Put together, I've got, you know, the Velcro strips on there. And then uh, on the ends, I leave a little bit of room so that I can separate them at the kit. But otherwise, they're pretty much together. I just bring those over to the mixing board. Here I'm getting uh, overheads out of the way. And those are just the ones that I use for home recording. Uh, the band has other ones. Typically don't need to mic my cymbals in most of the places we play. Outdoor gigs, I do like to do that. So get the cowbell off there, start packing up the drums themselves. This is my number two snare drum, sometimes number one, my Pearl 5.5 by 14 Session Studio Select, wonderful drum. And then the uh, Tour Custom Maple Yamaha. I've since put a wood hoop on that. In fact, I did it right before the gig. It came in the mail. And it's a completely different drum now. I put a wood hoop on top. I'm going to be putting one on the bottom. And here is my uh, fabulous hardware case I got for 20 bucks. This is for like uh, displays that you go to trade shows and have all your display stuff in there. There's stands and backdrops and whatever. I've seen those selling for about $200 each, so I know I got a great deal. But they have skateboard wheels on them. Um, it's got a recessed top. And um, it's just a killer case. It, and I'm not putting that much into it. I've got one. The first stand I put in was a cymbal stand. And I've got an extra boom arm for my ride that goes on that and the cowbell mount. I just pop that in there. And then I start taking down the cymbal arms like you see here. I fold those all the way down so they fit nicely in here. And the ones for the... uh splash and little china symbols so it doesn't take too long really to get those down i like to you know there's a snare snare stand goes in there and then the only other things i have are my microphone stand i'll be grabbing that next and then the floor tom legs so as i'm packing the floor toms i basically put them in the cases upside down and just pull off the legs at that point kind of you know economy of movement rather than flipping them over every time so just pull those off of there i have them all set the same so it doesn't matter which go where i don't need memory locks i've got uh a black magic marker lined on uh, top and bottom of the uh the mounts for those so it's pretty much a piece of cake to uh, repeat the setup. I have started 
uh, at home, I think I, I'm going to start canting those a little bit of an angle towards me so they're not completely flat. So now it's just a matter of packing the drums up into their cases and then putting them towards the back door in the staging area, getting them ready to go outside, then into the van. Now you didn't see me clean them here. Um, I'll typically do, these didn't get dirty or sweaty or anything uh, at the last show, so they're fairly clean, but I always give them a nice wipe down before we play. Uh, one step that I did not show, like I, I mentioned at the top of the video, I didn't get any, uh, you know, in club setup shots. I just, you know, too much chaos. But the last thing I do when everything's set up, I go around to every wing nut, to every lug, to every uh, tom arm and make sure it is tight. It's snug. Bass drum pedal. Make sure that the beater and the uh, everything is secured. The uh, I'm not sure what the name of the mechanism is, but where the spring is, there's a, an adjuster on there. If that thing comes loose, you don't have a bass drum. So I make sure I go over every bit of that kit, the rack parts, the rack legs, and make sure everything is super tight. So once I got the hardware packed up in that case, just get that out of the way. And that goes into the van really easy. That's not that heavy. Um, either to lift, which is great. Usually, you know, I'll, I'll get bags so heavy I, I can barely lift them. Next thing is my uh, cable hi-hat. I need to get a good uh, road case. If anybody knows of a particular road case that you might use for a cable hat, I'd be uh, interested to know. Now, the bass drum does collect a lot of dust, especially a black kit really shows it. So that's one I always wipe down before I pack it away. And again, I, I wipe them down at the club. I'll uh, wipe down the rack at the club also uh, just to get fingerprints off of it. Um, again, it's something people might not see, but uh, I do it anyway for myself. I have to look at it. But I take care not to sweat on that uh, nice drum head and just my drums in general I, I try to a guy sweat a lot you'll see a lot of this video I had a towel over my shoulder I uh, just got done rehearsing before I did this and I just just me moving around at my size yeah I sweat so doing a little uh, wipe down on the heavier stuff here on the rack and I just turn the uh, hi-hat clamp and the tom arms sideways a little bit i do have memory locks on those so they snap right back then fold that arm with the nitrous bottle in and she's ready to go i just carry that as a unit i don't bother taking that apart anymore it's, it's a waste of time i've got a van so then i get the miscellaneous stuff my stick bag and uh, throne and everything like that so then i uh, take a skateboard wheel and i burnish down my uh my quick setup markers, the Velcro that I use here. And I, I try to do that so that those are always there, so they always stay. And uh, the more you burnish them down, the more they become a permanent part of the mat. Again, this is a rubber back mat. And then I get the vacuum out. And as long as I burnish those down, those things don't come up. I make sure it's nice and clean for wherever I get. I roll it up and then uh, I tie this off with a... Uh, it's just, uh, it's got Velcro on either end of it. It's from a yoga mat. So if, you know, it's a cool way to carry a carpet. As long as you can roll it tight enough, this is a neat way to carry it. You basically got a handle then for your rug. Just fasten those, pick it up on your way. Sorry about the lighting here on this one. Uh, this is my personal bag. This stays behind my kit. And I've got a few necessary things. I've got you know, four T-shirts for three sets. Uh, I sweat through one setting up, and then I've got you know two or three others. Always have extras. I've got three towels for two sets. I'll bring four towels for three sets. Can never have enough dry towels. And after every set, I put on some deodorant. Make sure I'm toweled off. I put on a fresh shirt before I go talking to anybody. Uh, so I always try to stay fresh throughout the show. I mean, that's really important to me. I like networking and talking with folks who come out. 
A lot of times there are ladies who want to give me a hug, and if I reek, that'll be the last hug they give me. But I bring a, a plastic garbage bag. I use that as a laundry bag. I bring just simple tools, just a Phillips head screwdriver, a little wrench, uh, drum key. I got a pen and, of course, deodorant. And then I bring uh, that's to wipe my kit down and my, and my rack. But I keep that right behind the kit and uh, can't live without it. Hydration is obviously very important. I sweat like crazy. These Gatorade Zero Packets are much cheaper than getting uh, bottles every time. So save your bottles, guys. Um, the ones on the right give you a lot of protein, 45 calories each. They say to drink immediately, but they replace a lot of electrolytes, which are going to help prevent heat cramps. That's the fill line on those bottles. And... Um, they're made for 16.9 ounce water bottles, so that's about where that is on the bottle for full strength. Um, but yeah, keep your bottles, get this stuff mixed up. I drink uh, the regular ones, the small ones during the set, and the other ones after the set. Four, four of those bottles fit in this little cooler I have that stays behind the kit with uh, ice packs and uh, the drink mixes themselves. And here is the packed van. I could fit this in a smaller car, but uh, there's no room for anything. So I, I leave that rack piece together so I don't have to set it up every time. Um, just give everything a little bit of room, but put it in there. I don't like to stack the drums because, you know, I tune them. I'm using soft bags, so um, I don't want to put pressure against the heads before I play them. But with my cable hat, I've got to find a uh, road case to be able to... Uh, just curl that up real neatly. I hate carrying it loose like that, but my uh, hardware case slides in there really nice. And then uh, bag with all my cables and uh, throne and fan fits in over there. But uh, it rides pretty well, and it's not too much weight for this van at all spread out like that. But, um, yeah, makes it easy also when you have the, the rest of the band assisting you loading stuff bringing it into the uh bringing it out to the van at the end of the night too so you can set it just like this but i'll just leave this overnight in the car until uh next day and then uh go ahead and get that uh load it back into the house of course it's always my goal to be the first guy in the band here and it looks like i am so i'm gonna back up here get uh loaded in so in a case like this where we're setting up the rear lighting truss as well as the front and uh, we've got big thick kind of like packing blankets but even thicker they're acoustical blankets we hang across the back uh, to cut down on the reflection we got a big carpet that we uh, bring typically this is a carpeted stage so want to cut down on the reflections as much as possible but uh guys are great about helping and i have to kind of wait till that rear truss is set up then it's a go then i can start my kit and everyone else is setting up their gear and kind of have to stay to myself when i tear everything down at the end of the night because there's people all around me tearing things down and i have to you know balance between being a gentleman and also hey, I've got to get my stuff down too because the lighting trusses have to come down. So uh, it's a good balance, but everyone helps each other out. So the Sunday setup begins with rolling out the carpet and getting everything back out. It's a wonder I don't take these back into the house. When I get home from a gig, there's just no way. Leave everything locked in the garage. So yeah, just uh, made this one fairly simple, chopped it up into little bits, not exactly a time lapse, but uh, just shortened it quite a bit as you can see. But uh, putting everything back to where it goes, that's the beauty of memory locks, putting all the arms where they were, uh, the markers, put all the drums where they were, and those are going to get adjusted even again. I had to move things a tiny bit, which uh, screws everything up, but... Uh, these drums, by the way, are uh, a black lacquer. The one I'm putting on now, the 14-inch, was actually a redwood drum. It's the same series, 8000 series, um, but I contacted Jam and Sam and got a black gloss wrap. 
You can't tell the difference, even sitting right next to each other in any light. You can't tell until you see that seam that it's a wrap. Then I get the hi-hat, put that thing back on, and um, pretty, pretty simple. Everything's repeatable. I set up the pedals before I get too much in the way. And again, I'm going with uh, Tama pedals on both of them. I love those long footboards, even for my big old feet. Um, I'm not even touching the chain when I'm doing the literal heel-to-toe doubles on that pedal. Um, I, I love those long footboards. It's a really nice uh, pedal, and I did adjust the spring tension a little bit more, so things play super solid now. And uh, just setting the stands back up. Again, everything is marked on the carpet where it goes. The stands themselves have a black magic marker to show how far to set the to spread the legs up and uh, the arm angles and all those types of things. I basically just lay everything out, all the arms where they go, then put everything together. It's just kind of a ritual, but uh, it's not always this easy at a club if the band is there. You know, trying to set this up uh, at, you know, with all that space that I have now. I mean, there's no one else in the house, so... Um, piece of cake to set this up and take as much room as I need to. But when there's other guys in the club, you know, setting up amps and, you know, lights and stuff like that. And when I'm helping do that, you know, the drums don't get set up as quickly. So when it's a place we've played before and I know I can get there early and if we don't have to set up the rear trusses, a lot of times my drums are set up and the mics are all plugged in before the rest of the band even gets there. I like having that done. Then I can help with load in and um, just it's, it's a much more efficient night uh, when I'm able to do that. I'm getting the last of the booms put on here. And then it's going to be, you know, back to uh, tuning. I like to tune sometimes before I uh, do the rehearsal. Sometimes I don't even bother. I did do a test on these, and I think I mentioned earlier the 14-inch is just short of a half-step uh, flat. So, yeah, it doesn't stay in tune exactly as the rest of them. The other ones are pretty much where they were set, um, the notes that I had them set at. So uh, that was that was nice not to have to uh, uh, tune all of them, but I did kind of fine tune them. But it was a piece of cake. And uh, again, Evans UV two heads. I I just can't say enough about those. Um, they sound phenomenal on any kit I put them on. And so here I am wrapping it up, just putting the last of the symbols on the hi hats and this setup took me about 20 minutes, just kind of chilling out and, you know, not really rushing or everything. So sit down and test it and see how it feels. And yeah, everything's where it should be. And, um, it's ready to go for the next set of rehearsals. We're playing again Saturday. So I'm going to be tearing these down, uh, Thursday night, probably family reunion weekend the family to come out people who've never heard me play finally get to hear me play but thanks for stopping by we'll see you soon